Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming. Uh, a few organizational messages at the beginning. Please mute your phones. Uh, second, uh, there's a party tomorrow, as you perhaps know. Uh, the tickets uh, were available at the Red Hat, uh, Red Hat recruiting booth uh, at the entrance. As far as I know, the tickets are over for today, but, but there, there should be uh, more tickets tomorrow. If you need to leave and enter, please close the doors as quietly as possible. Uh, you are welcome to evaluate the sessions. When you visit this URL, this last slash is important. And the next session uh, is uh, by Martin Malina and uh, Marian Labuda from JBoss Tools. Hello. So my name is Martin Marina, and uh, today we'll talk about uh, uh, tooling that is uh, available today uh, in Eclipse for for Docker. That will be the first part of the presentation with some demo. Then uh, we'll show you what we have uh, ready for uh, Red Hat Container Development Platform uh, Toolkit. Sorry, kit, just kit. Yeah. And, uh, and finally, we'll show you uh, our OpenShift uh, version 3 tooling in Eclipse, and that will be shown to you by my colleague, Marianne Labuda. So is there anybody here who hasn't heard of Docker yet? I guess not. OK, OK. <laughs> so this is uh, what they say uh, on the official website. Docker allows you to package an application with all of its dependencies into a standardized unit for software development. So uh, in the past, when you had uh, an application that you wanted to deploy, you would, you would just install it on a physical machine. Then you would have operating systems. You would install all the things that you needed, and then, uh, then start your application. Uh, then later, uh, People came up with virtualization. Uh, so it got a little bit easier because you could have multiple uh, virtual machines uh, on one physical machine and you could, uh, you could replicate them. And so it, uh, it improved the situation. And now the next step is containers where you have everything bundled together in one image. And just run it, and you don't have to worry about any dependencies because it's all included. So Docker is uh, it's lightweight, it's very fast. It usually takes just a couple of seconds to, to start uh, a container. Um, yeah, you, you should be able to, to just get the image and run it everywhere where you have Docker available. Um, when you have multiple containers, Unless you, you expose some ports and allow them to communicate with one another, they're isolated, so it's secure. And here is the, the typical uh, workflow, if, well, the, the pieces uh, that you need to work with when you want to get started is that uh, you can either, maybe I can use this. You can either start with 
with a Docker file yeah, that you write, write on your own. So, so you define what, uh, what image to, uh, to base it on, and then you add some of your own configuration, and then you build it, create an image, then you start a container, and, uh, run it on a Docker daemon, and it's running. Or you can get an image from, uh, from a registry, from the Docker hub, or some other and then also run it. Or if you build your own image, you can then push it to a registry. Uh, so what do we have today available in Eclipse? Uh, we have Docker tools that are part of uh, Linux tools, but they actually are not only for Linux, it's for Linux, OS X, and Windows. And uh, it's hosted at Eclipse.org. And it can, it can connect to any of your existing uh, uh, Docker, Docker machines or, uh, or, or a Docker daemon uh, running on your Linux machine. And it, it, uh, it helps you uh, doing all the, all the things that you would like to do with Docker. Uh, you know, some of the commands are, are pretty easy, like pull, that's easy to do from command line, but if you want to start uh, your container and then share some, vol uh, mount some volumes and uh, expose ports and uh, define some variables, it may be easier to do from, from an ID like Eclipse. So uh, I'll show you a demo. And in this demo, we'll show the, uh, all the all the basic things like uh, how to connect to a, a, a Docker daemon, how to pull images. Uh, well, I'll show you all of this. Okay, so, so here I have uh, Jables Developer Studio, which is based on Eclipse Mars. And what I have here is uh, Docker Explorer. So we have, a, we have a Docker perspective here, which includes Docker Explorer, which uh, shows your connections. Then uh, Docker images and Docker containers. So if I click here, it will take a few seconds to open, and then it will, it will allow me to uh, create a connection. It's actually taking way too long. So yeah, here, here I can uh, enter a connection name. And on Linux, I would probably use uh, Unix sockets. But here, I'm using TCP connection. I have a Docker machine installed and running on this machine. So if I use this search, it will show me the Docker machine. And I just finish, and I ha have the connection here. Here I can see some images that I have here. and. And containers are empty right now. You can also see it here. Uh, OK, so what I'm going to do is I'm going uh, I'm going to start uh, two containers. One will be a Postgres database. Uh, the other will be Wildfly. And uh, they will be linked. And uh, in Wildfly, I will have a data source that will be using the Postgres database, and then we will deploy an application to it. Um, yeah, I already have the images here, but if I, if I wanted to pull an image, I, I can use this dialog where I can either just enter the, the image that I want, or here I can search for images. But I already have those prepared, so uh, I'm going to write it here. And here you, you, have, uh, you have some options. So we're going to expose the, the port uh, 5432 of the database so that the Wildfly container can connect to it later on. And here. Uh, we will set our secret password for Postgres. Uh, thanks. Uh, Postgres password. Okay. And that 
should be it. So I can also choose a name, but it has this vocabulary of, of names that will be created randomly. Uh, so you can see the database was started. And now I'm, I'm going to have a modified uh, Wildfly uh, uh, image. So here I have a project. Uh, and as you can see, I have a Docker file here. So in this Docker file, I based this on Wildfly. And uh, I, I add a, a module for Postgres and then I, I get a modified standalone XML, which is the configuration file for, uh, for Wildfly. Uh, I will show you. Yeah, here it is, okay. Um, so this is the data source definition. And here you can see it uses uh, environmental variables that start with db uh, underscore. And uh, this, is, uh, this, this is available because we will, once we start the image, we will link the, the Postgres uh, container. Um, okay, so here on the Docker file, I can just use run, run on server. Uh, sorry. Uh, Docker image build, and this will just build the image, and then it's available uh, here. So when starting this again, I will I will expose uh, these ports here so that I can then show the uh, the web page in the browser. And on the next page, uh, I I have a deployment directory that will be. Uh, it will, that's how I'm gonna set it here. It will use a directory on my machine that will be mounted on the contain, container when it's started. So I, I have the correct path here. Mm. Sorry, I forgot one thing. Uh, this is, this, here is to uh, an option to link to an existing container. Actually, I can. So this is my Postgres database, and I will use DB as the alias. So the database is running, and you, here you can see that it, uh, it uh, created the data source, and hopefully it's working. Here in Data Source Explorer, I have, uh, I have uh, a connection configured. And in tables, you can see there is nothing yet. But now I'm going to. I have this deploy only uh, uh, server adapter that will just deploy uh, anything to the to the directory. So here you can see it, it deployed the application. And here in a browser, uh, this is my Wildfly server, and this is the application. And I can I can add a user. And now let me check uh, the data source explorer. I'm going to disconnect this. And then connect again. And now, now you can see the member database, and also you can check here. You know the the content, so it's there. It seems to be working. 
Okay, so so in this demo, we, we saw um, two containers running uh, linked together, and so they could uh, the Wildfly uh, the Wildfly server uh, was able to uh, to use the database running in a different container. So maybe uh, there is something missing uh, for you uh, if you want to. Uh, if you want to start deploying, uh, developing and then deploying uh, your, Docker, your containerized applications uh, uh, on Red Hat Enterprise Linux or uh, Red Hat uh, Atomic Host or OpenShift version 3, then uh, that's where Red Hat Container Development kin, uh, Kit comes into play. And it's a unified development environment for building containerized apps. And it's, uh, it supports Linux, Windows, OS X. And uh, it is basically uh, a set of Vagrant boxes. A Vagrant allows you to, uh, to configure your custom uh, Uh, your custom virtual machines with uh, with configuration so that when you start a virtual machine you have everything uh, ready everything that you need so in in Red Hat CDK we have a vagrant box uh, then there are a couple of uh, vagrant uh, plugins uh, one of them is uh, subscription manager vagrant registration registration plugin so when you start uh, when you start the host uh, it will automatically register to Red Hat uh, customer portal and CDK is available as a beta from developer.redhat.com. So I'm just going to show you what we have in, uh, in JBoss Developer Studio. So in, uh, we have a server adapter. In the server's view, just like you would create a new server, uh, you can create a CDK server adapter, which then will allow you to start, uh, start the, the machine, the host. And so either I can do this manually using this, or I can use the JBoss to runtimes detection plugin that we have. Mm. Yeah, I already have the, the path here. Uh, so when I search the path, it will find CDK version 2, and here it appeared. Uh, I, just, I just need to set up uh, my credentials for Red Hat Customer Portal, which I already have here, and then I can start this. It will take a minute to start, and what it does is that it basically runs Vagrant app, but once it started, it uh, it will create uh, automatically a connection to uh, to Docker, which is inside the Vagrant box, uh, and also it will create a connection to OpenShift. So then you can start develop, developing for OpenShift using the OpenShift tools that Marianne will show you in a minute. So what I have here is the same thing that I could actually do you know, from the command line and check the status. And now it shows up as running. But, but the box is started, but some configuration is going on still. So it takes a couple more seconds. Uh, because what it also does is after the box is started, it configures uh, OpenShift, and so that you're ready to start working with OpenShift. Right now, it's uh, yeah, it's running the registration plugin uh, that I told you about that uh, that registers on the internet uh, to the Red Hat customer portal. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
taking a little bit way too long, maybe some problems with the internet connection. Yeah, so if this worked, I don't know if it's still gonna uh, finish the registration or not. But once that's done, okay. Now it's just a couple of seconds. That was the bottleneck right now. <clears throat> okay, so now it started. Now it created the CDK a Docker connection here that uses the CDK box. And here, like with any other Docker, you have, uh, you have images, you can have containers, run them. Uh, but you can see something different here, that here the images were just the, the repository name and then the name of the image. But here also have uh, the whole path to the re registry. Because here you have uh, you have Red Hat uh, registry, but also you can use the regular Docker.io registry for all the images that are available publicly. Okay, so this is where I uh, hand it over to Marianne, who will show a little bit about OpenShift. Okay, I will continue where Martin uh, finished. Uh, OpenShift Free is a Red Hat uh, platform as a service. It's uh, built uh, upon Docker and Kubernetes. Docker provides containers and Kubernetes provides orchestration. Uh, what OpenShift adds is source code man so <coughs> source code management, builds, deployments, tracking, etc. Uh, CDK uh, provided by uh, Red Hat uh, also contains an uh, OpenShift instance for local development. Now let's get to demo. Uh, as Martin mentioned, uh, CDK server adapter creates a new OpenShift uh, connection uh, for test admin. Uh, in OpenShift Explorer, you can see uh, under uh, OpenShift connection its projects, and uh, every project contains uh, services. Uh, other OpenShift resources uh, are located in uh, properties view. For example, you can check uh, what kind of pods are running on OpenShift, etc. Uh, many of OpenShift resources come from underlying uh, technologies. For example, pods are from Kubernetes. Uh, there are image streams, uh, what are private uh, a registry for uh, Docker images, etc. To create a new application, let's select a new application in context menu of test admin. Uh, we can create a new project for this application. Well, project name is uh, ID of a project, and uh, display name is uh, name which is displayed under. Uh, OpenShift connection in OpenShift Explorer. Uh, we can select either from server templates or local templates. Uh, let's use EAP 6.4 basic uh, source to image template, uh, which is located al already on uh, CDK. 
on the uh, next wizard page, we have some template parameters, for example, application name or source, source code uh, repository where uh, source code for building a new application is used, uh, branch, etc. Uh, we can also add or remove uh, some labels. Labels are used to group uh, OpenShift resources. We can manage uh, OpenShift resources more easily with uh, those labels. For example, remove them or edit. And uh, once you hit finish button, you get creation application summary, which uh, tells you what OpenShift resources have been created, whether there were some complications <coughs> or some resources uh, were not uh, created because of some errors. Uh, for this new application, I used the uh, kitchen sink uh, example, as, uh, which is located in JBoss EAP Quick Starts uh, repository. Uh, and its uh, uh, whole uh, repository is cloned locally, and the uh, specific example is imported to your workspace. Uh, once application process has started, you can see It's builds. Uh, build uh, pod creates uh, at first the Docker image of your application. Then this image is pushed to local image uh, repository registry, and uh, then a new application pod is created where application is running. Uh, we can check uh, pods uh, logs. Uh, it takes uh, some time till. Application image is built because uh, it downloads some even dependencies and uh, then create image and push it to local repository. To be able to see these logs, you have to have a uh, set uh, OC binary, which is OpenShift tools uh, command line um, interface or binary to uh, use uh, or to work with OpenShift server. which is located in OpenShift uh, free server, uh, preference page in Workbench preferences. Uh, this binary is also required for server adapter, uh, which will be used uh, to publish uh, source code. So OK, image was successfully built and pushed. Now there is an application bot. Uh, application bot. We can check log and see that the uh, server has started and it's running. So we can then uh, show, show application in uh, browser. Uh, there is a control showing the browser for services and projects. And we can see it's running. Uh, but uh, mostly when you are developing uh, your applications, uh, you want to also change source code and push changes uh, back to server and see it's uh, changed. So let's create server adapter for OpenShift. Let's select OpenShift free server adapter. We are using connection uh, for CDK. And uh, uh, here we are. Uh, we have to map a local project in workspace uh, to remote service. Once we have server adapter, we can also show application via server adapter in web browser. OK, let's change some code. And once uh, code change is uh, done, we can publish it to OpenShift. Uh, this is uh, uh, 
possible thanks to rsync, remote uh, sync. It copies uh, local files to uh, re remote OpenShift, and it's uh, really fast. And now application should be changed. Uh, there's also an uh, integration with uh, live reload, so, so you won't be, uh, you won't have to uh, every time manually refresh your browser. Uh, once files are changed, uh, browser finds out it's changed and automatically refresh. automatically changed also on server side. Once you have uh, set up your server adapter and uh, you publish first change, uh, we are publishing server adapter uh, using rsync. Uh, local files, uh, once they are changed, are automatically published to uh, server. OK, that's all from OpenShift side. So uh, we saw today uh, containers uh, in Eclipse, uh, which Martin said something about uh, in uh, our Docker tooling. Uh, then uh, we had uh, CDK, which uh, contains OpenShift and Docker, etc. And uh, well, finally, I show you how to create a new application uh, in JBoss Developer Studio with OpenShift tools. Do you have any question? <laughs> uh, if somebody has a question. Hi, uh, in a demo you have changed the static HTML file as I saw it. Oh, could you repeat, please? Uh, you have changed, in a demo, yeah. you show that you change static file HTML and then you refresh the page and it all changed. That's yeah. pretty cool. But uh, how the process would work if I were to change some more sophisticated source code? Will your automation recompile, redeploy, restart the server possibly, and handle all the stuff like that? Uh, well, at the moment, only static uh, files are possible to change and automatically have it refreshed on server side. Uh, because uh, to change Java classes and uh, have it uh, synchronized with server requires <coughs> deb debugging on server side and more stuff. But uh, at the moment, we don't have it in our tooling. It's more like experimental at the moment, and uh, we would like to see how it works, and we added more stuff, more stuff to it. Okay, thank you. Anybody else wants a scarf? <laughs> okay, so if there are no more questions, then this is, this is all. Thank you. Thank you.
na registraci, no, ale, ale možná jako, jako, jako v tom hodně šiftu, to nějak z nějakého rapa klonuje, nějaký skýpšek, ten template nějaký. Nebo se poznáš. Ale sice jsme měli CDK, ale ty templatey asi je variány. Já jsem ne, četl, tak jsem si říkal, jestli mám hned to odepsat, už jsem na cestě. <laughs> Já, Já jsem to mě... už neviděl, nebo se to neschovat. Ale tam to nevidět celkem. Ale spíš jsi měl rozumné rozlišení. Já jsem měl jaké rozlišení? Já jsem měl full HD, nebo něco takového. Já jsem se to zdeformoval. Já jsem se na to nepozoril. No ale měl jsem blbý aspekt ratio. Já jsem se nepozoril. Ale blbý jo, ale byl jsi celkem v pohodě, jakože ještě dobře se na to koukalo. Jako. Ani tady jsem se nekoukal, jsem se koukal do toho, jsem si rozprával, jak to je. No jo, to mě říkalo už předtím lidi, tak doufám, že jsem teď aspoň chvilku se koukal na lidi. Jsem tam, jo. Ano, položil si otázku, ale mohl si jich takých těch kontaktech položit věc. Tak ona se zpýtal o tom dokery a tak, to je dobré, a potom si skončil. Tak já otvára ústa, tak jakože vzadu tě já nemohli dobré rozhodnout. Nebo? Trénoval jsi si to, když jdeš první raz toto prezentovat, tak si to máš sám před zrkadlom predsvědčit na tej kráti. A toto je jedno, ty to jsi se zrazu predal na polu vidět a teraz je tam taká ta, taký ten pocit odpovzasti, že tam musíš nějak robit dobré. Jdeš na ten oběd nebo ne? Tak jdem. No, Martin, tak preberáš to tu konečně? Ty jsi to rána? Ty jsi se najedl, ale my bychom se rádi najedli. Já bych se taky rád najedl, ale... Tak se dohodníme. Jo, může teď tady počkat na to. Když se najíš, nebo si najíš, tak jich zvládnu. Lepší to. Jo, nejdeš. Nejdu. Já si těž jdem zobnu, nebo vrátím se. A tam něco je, tak je něco dobrýho. Tak mi nejde, že? Mohlka tam myslím. Mohlka tam může vyskytovat. Ty tak to? Jdeš si třeba ty polivky dát? No, tak budeš tu ty? Já to budu. Za 12 minut, 10. To se skončí nějak brzo. Jo, trochu jo. Asi 8 minut. Dobrý, tak to lepší než pozdě.